Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session of RESA Live. Today, I'm going to show you how to use RESA Foundation to analyze and design retaining walls. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to modify my drawing grid because I'm going to design a basement wall. Um, this is a partial basement structure, and the length is about 80 feet. So I want to include the, the full length of my wall here. And to modify my grid, I can just go to the Modify tab here and choose Drawing Grid. And I'm just going to change this to be 80 feet, and it's, we're just going to be looking at one wall, so I don't need any X. And that just helps me clean it up visually. I like the way that looks better. So to start drawing my walls, I can click on the Wall Footing icon here. And there are some preloaded wall footings available to you in Risa Foundation. However, today I'm going to add an additional wall footing definition. So to do that, I can press on this icon here. And it's going to take me to this wall footing definition editor page. I really like this page because it really helps me understand the inputs and the uh, different variables for my wall footing. I should go ahead and mention, um, I'm going to back out of this here, and if I come into my wall footing definition spreadsheet, I do have the option to add an additional wall footing through the spreadsheet as well. I just want to make sure that I make that known. Just by pressing enter, I can add in uh, a new wall footing here, if we call it basement wall. And I can change the type, and I can input all of the geometry here if I wanted to. However, also through within this spreadsheet, if I wanted to just click this red arrow right here, I'll also be presented with that same dialog. So this dialog looks a little bit different because it's showing me a strip footing. Um, so Risa Foundation, you do have the option between a retaining wall and a strip footing. And the, predominantly the difference between those is that the retaining wall will consider the lateral earth pressure, whereas the strip footing is looking uh, at just a gravity analysis alone. So for this basement wall, I'm going to want to consider those lateral earth pressures. So I'll go ahead and choose from this drop down menu of wall type to be a retaining wall. And so here on this first general tab, I have the option to specify the wall thickness. 18 inches is pretty good for a basement wall, so I'll leave that there. Since this basement wall is, is uh, supported at the top by the floor diaphragm above, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is propped. And we'll say this wall is about 18 feet tall, um, and the soil will come up to about 17 feet, and that's just due, maybe we've got a sidewalk pavement uh, on the exterior that we need to account for. So we'll leave the saturated soil height at 6 feet. Um, we also have the option to specify whether or not the footing is poured uh, congruently with the wall. Um, so Commonly, it's not. Commonly, they're two separate pores. So you, you have the option to specify whether or not that interface between the footing and the wall is rough or smooth. And so I'm going to say it's rough, and that's dependent on whether or not you specified that in your design drawings. So we can specify also our toe length and our heel length. And so I'm going to leave those at three, and we can go ahead and let's change our heel length to four. I also have the option here to specify the concrete material. We can use a masonry uh, wall, but in this instance, I'm going to use concrete, and I'm going to change both the wall construction material to normal weight, 4,000 concrete, and I'll want to change the footing as well. So now that I kind of have this general material input, I can come to the soil tab in my wall footing definition editor. And now this is where I'll input all of my soil variables. So these variables are um, what you'll obtain from your geotechnical engineer that they'll produce in your geotechnical report. And so um, oftentimes you might be doing a retaining wall analysis prior to um, obtaining a geotechnical report. And if that's the case, I always recommend people um, reference the USDA Web Soil Survey. It's a great resource where you can obtain some preliminary soil data. That, in combination with some of those preliminary design values out of the IBC, um, can really get you started in a preliminary analysis for your retaining wall. So we have the option here to choose the Rankin or the Coulomb method. And I'm going to keep the, the Rankin method. We're not going to consider friction in this analysis here. We can specify the soil toe depth. 
you'll notice that we've got three different soil inputs here. And so we can, um, we can uh, the program can analyze our lateral earth pressure coefficients for three different soil types. And that is essentially the, the soil that is at the toe of the retaining wall, uh, the soil that is at the heel of the retaining wall, and then also that saturated soil at the heel of the retaining wall. And so I'm gonna leave the K values blank because the program will automatically calculate those for me. Um, however, you do have the option to input those values if you know them already as well. Um, so for the soil densities and the internal friction angles, I'm gonna leave these all as the program defaults just for the uh, purposes of today. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and change my surcharge load to 100 PSF. And so that's all dependent on the application there um, of what, what might be applied on the exterior of your wall. So now I'll swap into the details tab here of my retaining wall. And this is getting into the nitty gritty reinforcement details of your wall footing. So I've got the option here to specify if I want a single layer or each face for my retaining wall. Um, I can specify if I want the outer bars to be vertical or horizontal. And in this case, since my, my wall is spanning vertically, I'm gonna wanna keep those outer bars to be vertical. And so then the soil side of my wall is what is classified as that in interior cover. And so you can see that in the diagram, the soil here is on the right side and I'll want that cover to be three inches. Um, and then the interior is one and a half, that's suitable for the interior conditions. So in general, it's gonna optimize my vertical bar spacing here based on these in the minimum and maximum values that I input. Um, for this horizontal bar spacing though, I think based on just general temperature and shrinkage requirements and area steel requirements, I'm gonna need to in decrease that spacing to 12 inches. Um, so that's the wall. And now in this dialog here, I have the option to specify the reinforcement for the footing. So here I also have the option each face or a single layer. We'll keep it each face. I can specify that longitudinal bar spacing. I'm gonna reduce that to 12 inches. Um, and uh, we can specify our bottom bar spacing and top bar, and that'll be optimized based on our minimum and maximum spacings. Um, and now that I think about it, based on my, my soil properties that I input, over here, my vertical bar size, I think I'm gonna actually need to increase that to a number eight. So I'm gonna increase that to a number eight because that's gonna be uh, the bending that the wall will see. So I can go ahead and press OK. And so I was able to input all of those variables without having to do it through the spreadsheet. Um, so I can come in back to my wall footing to draw my wall footing and I can choose from this drop down menu basement wall because I now have this basement wall option available. I can choose apply and I can just draw based on that click nodes based on that drawing grid that I edited earlier. So now we have this plan view of our wall panel or, or of our retaining wall. Even though RESA Foundation is a plan-based program where, where elevation is not really considered, I usually still like to swip, uh, switch into that isometric view just because that's kind of, my mind's a little bit more visual in that essence that I like to see the actual uh, three dimensions of, of the retaining wall. You can see how that retaining wall is oriented based on the soil backfill in the, in the 3D view. So now we have defined our lateral earth pressures through that wall panel or that retaining wall uh, definition editor. But something else we need to consider is the um, soil definitions for the general area of the for, the, for the bearing of the footing at the base of our retaining wall. So the soil definition spreadsheet is where the, the bearing of the retaining wall at the footing will be considered. And so right now we have a default soil definition. We've got a subgrade modulus of 100 and an allowable bearing of three. I'm gonna switch that to four for my specific project. That'll be project specific. You do have the option to specify depth properties. So this will come into play more whenever you um, maybe have some pile foundations. Um, and so this checkbox here, there's a default soil property. That essentially means that this is the soil that exists everywhere on this project. Um, if I wanted to add, say, another soil, I could do so by pressing enter in my spreadsheet, and I'll expand this here so we can see both. 
And so in, I can have a soil in addition to my default and say you have a very large project where the soils differ on the property and you've got a bunch of footings or something drawn in your model that you need to consider both of those soil types. What you can do is you can add this additional soil, give it its own properties, and you can draw soil regions which will override that default in that area where you've driven, uh, drawn your soil regions. So that's how you can consider multiple types of soil in the same project. And they can each have their own specific depth properties as well. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, this line because we don't necessarily need it for today's purposes. We just need that default. And so I can come into my load combinations and we can see that, we already, that we've got dead load and live load and hydrostatic load already considered. So we've already got the hydrostatic loading considered in our model here, and that was through the lateral earth pressures that we specified in our uh, retaining wall editor. But we're gonna need to apply some dead and live loads. So to do that, I'm just gonna use our line load tool. So I'll draw, draw line loads. Um, and today, I'm actually gonna keep um, my loads applied on this wall concentric. You do have the option here to specify, um, say in a moment about the Z axis. So that would be very applicable if you've got beams framing into the wall that's providing a little bit of an eccentric loading due to that offset in the shear connection. So that would be a good opportunity to apply a moment. Um, for now, for today's purposes, we'll just keep that loading concentric. So here I'm gonna choose a 0.1 KLF dead load. I'm gonna choose to keep this dialog open because I'm gonna need to apply live loads. And then I'm just gonna apply the, live by, the load by clicking the two nodes at the base of the wall. And you'll see that it automatically populates that load at the top. And now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my live load. And we'll increase our live load until it's say 0.5 kit per fee. And I can apply this load again at the base of our wall. And so now we have our wall, our wall loaded. Again, I, I do wanna mention in our load combination spreadsheet, this is just considering, today we're just considering dead load, live load, and hydrostatic. You do have the option to consider earthquake loading on your retaining walls. However, that's not gonna be addressed here today, but um, we will be uh, publishing a video here soon that will go more into depth and we will address the um, seismic considerations on retaining walls in another video that we'll publish. So I encourage you guys to please subscribe to our channel. So that way, once we publish that video, you can be notified as soon as we, we release that. So we'll go ahead and run the analysis for this retaining wall. Um, you can review all of the results for your retaining wall through the spreadsheets. However, I'm a little bit more of a visual person and I really like the detail reports that we have here. So I can view the detail report from our retaining wall and just by clicking along the base of that wall there. And I really first like this introdu introductory graphic into the retaining wall. So it's giving you all of the details you need here uh, to construct your wall. It's giving me the reinforcement spacing, it's indicating that it's propped, and all of the spacing uh, definitions are all there. So that's a great image. You could pass this off to the draftsman and they could go ahead and start running with it. Um, you have the option here, up here to choose which load combination to view. We'll go ahead and stick with service. When I come down, I really like this loading diagram as well. This really shows me the actual lateral earth pressures that were calculated as well as like the bearing pressures. So that shows that I've got full contact bearing, um, the minimum and maximum bearing values, and even the passive pressures. So this is a really useful and helpful diagram to help you understand how the program's analyzing this retaining wall. We can keep scrolling down and get some more material properties here and, it, and uh, the more analysis. And you'll see as I keep scrolling down, we've got the footing design and it gives us the soil bearing check. But it looks like here, since we're not, we're not checking overturning or sliding, um, and that's due to the fact that the wall panel is propped. So I can actually just quick, quick show you guys. Um, I, I wanna show you guys basically the, the overturning resistance and the overturning forces on this wall as if it wasn't propped. So, we can quickly do that by just editing this wall panel again. We'll come into our wall footing definition spreadsheet. Here's that option again in the spreadsheet where it says propped. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to no. And then I'm gonna change the footing restrained to no as well. So that's gonna give me those sliding results at the base. 
Um, and since I'm not propping this wall, I have a hunch that I'm going to need to increase the uh, heel length of my wall to resist some of that overturning. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to increase this heel length to let's try five and a half feet. So I'll go ahead and select OK. We can run our analysis again. This time we got a warning log. So it looks like we have some, something we need to investigate in our detail report. So we can go ahead and do that. Just select my detail report again and select my wall panel. So we can see the increased heel length here. We've got some revised soil bearing. And then we can keep scrolling down so we can obtain our overturning check as well as our sliding check. So it looks like our sliding check is a little bit over and we'll need to go back and make some changes to modify that. But here you can see the overturning check. We've got the resisting force as well as the actual overturning force. So that is a summary of retaining walls here in Risa Foundation. Again, like I said, we'll, we'll be publishing a more in-depth video as well here in the future. So I encourage you to please subscribe to our channel so you can be notified of that. Uh, thank you for joining today. I hope this was very useful for you.